Hello everyone. Today's video topic is single sided form work. Why we use it, how we plan it, and it's going to be a basic general video. Explain some components, the basic mistakes, and the anchoring, everything. Uh, there is no calculation in this video right now, but in the next video, I'll definitely do the calculation to, ca to identify the load and how it behaves. So we will understand the basics first. There are three major components in this single-sided form work. One is form work panels, definitely single-sided frames and anchoring. So we can see some simple plan with the sections. So I will make you understand uh, how it is, how it looks like, and how it works. So generally, why we require a single-sided shuttering sort of form work? Generally, where the situation where we cannot able to place the tie rod the one uh, because there is there's a no as the name suggests a single sided so there is no two sided form work and you cannot place the tie rods like this way you cannot place the tie rod in this way so uh, the loads are coming in this direction like this way so this frames which stands with the support of the anchor so we will see how it looks like this pile generally first step in the any building construction they will put the piles in the ground and then they need to make it separate a uh, concrete layer so that it is not visible if you see at the plan view sorry in the some images these are the piles how it looks like then they will make a short short kit short crit concrete or like a single sided wall it depends on the client how they want to make it so these dimensions are very important to calculate this load so we will discuss in the next videos detailedly so the single sided form work comes with along uh, along the various heights uh, like if it's a 3 meter 4.5 1.5 anything if it is a more height it's not a normal height like 3 meter 4.5 then you need additional support with the single sided frame and it acts at a one unit again there will be anchoring types for the various height this is anchoring type a because the height is um, more and this is a different type i just name it as the anchoring type a and b to just to differentiate between the two so generally uh, while designing we will make some mistakes i want to highlight it here so that next time you'll keep in mind that this may uh, tend to major damage at the site because concrete this structure may fail if you do like this so the first mistake is like Using a vertical panel of a small width like a one meter below of that one and you're placing only one Supporting frame for the each panel this is not stable one because from here the loads will be coming from this side and This may tilt in any of the directions and concrete may come out from this direction so this is an entire disaster so generally for this height like i took it a three meter width you can use the same panel on the horizontal way of three meter height so that it acts as one unit this is more much safer than this kind of solution and if you think that uh, some complicated uh, drawings you cannot able to use the horizontal panels and it is not that much effective then you can do this uh, do the same solution in a different manner just use some rails the rails like generally what they will do is make this unit as a one a single unit it doesn't allow it to move so and another major drawing in this what we need to give to the site prior is the anchoring drawing as you see in the first plan there will be anchoring which supports uh, single sided frames so once you've done the planning you need to make some points like this way these points are nothing but the points of the anchor which is laid in the base plate like this way so before they cast the base plate the engineer must give the anchoring drawings to the site with the all dimension details and the type of anchors so which will help them 
to place the anchors here in the end tight with the reinforcement and then they can cast it once this is done then uh, you cannot change your plans everything so because it's fixed so be careful while doing the anchor drawing a single mistake can uh, cost you something so this is about the anchor drawings then we will discuss about the anchors the major type of anchors different types sorry different types of anchors and uh, how it should be utilized just look at it from form of company's catalog i have downloaded from the query uh, so here i can found some basic details about the loads and how the loads is distributed they are showing it here the vertical load v1 v2 and this cb is a concrete pressure definitely and the z is the load which has to be standed by the anchoring so anchoring is in this direction so they are telling there are they have the three different types of anchoring system dw15 dw is a dvdax it's generally used in europe uh, 15 is like a thickness of their uh, tie rod 15 mm 20 mm and 26 mm so this 26 mm can one tie rod can take up to 250 kilo newton load so here they are telling that uh if they generally use uh dw20 then one unit uh, one frame can take up to 300 kilonewton load like that much so here you can see some anchoring details so this vario gt rune flex and the maximo is their form of panel frame and the form of systems name so this is uh, the st uh, the single sided frames so this is the general one kind of anchoring This one. Here you can see that this will be a connector between these tie rods and the upper tie rods. This generally if it's DW20, they are telling that this should be DW20 and this also should be a DW20. So here you can see we use some rails. I forgot to mention in the in the last explanation there will be rails. Then there will be tie rod which connects this like a like a hexagonal nut kind of instrument um, component which connects the inside uh, anchoring support to the outside anchoring support. So this is the one kind of thing and this is generally a load max is straight one is can take more load than the anchor loop this is the second type of anchoring which is anchor loop so uh, we can see it here they have given the dimensions they have given the dimensions they have given some 45 degree angles how it should be placed And here we can see some details. So number five is the double anchor DW15 they are using, and hexagonal nut DW15, and three tie rod. Yeah, it's like you'll get every details if you visit uh, this kind of uh, form of suppliers website. They are telling how the installation should be. As I told, this is the anchor plan. So how it looks like because uh, first they will attach it to the reinforcement then they will pour the concrete then you can just remove this cap and it is ready for like installation so first these things everything is a lost tie rod and here you will remove it and you place the hexagonal nut then tighten it so how it is worked at the side I hope you'll get some information in this video. If you have any other question, please drop a comment and I will try to get back to you as soon as possible. And, and you found this information very useful and share with your civil engineer buddies. And we will see you in the next video. Thank you so much.